In this video, we'll be going over how to determine the charge of an ion in two different scenarios. The first scenario will be if you're just given an element and you have to predict the charge. And then the second, second situation is when you're given the number of protons and electrons, and then you have to determine the charge of the ion. So start with the, fir the first situation. Here we are just given the neutral elements, and then we have to de determine the charge that the elements would, would, would take on when they're in an ionic compound. So the easiest way to do this is just to, well, we can take a look at the periodic table and the elements follow these specific trends. Um, elements in the first column have a positive one charge, element in the second column, positive two. We skip the transition metals. Uh, elements in column in this next one will be plus three and then skip the carbon column and it goes negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. And with the transition metal, most transition metals can have multiple charges except a, G, Z, N, and C, D, they will have a fixed charge. So for this first one, we're, for A, G, well, A, G would just be positive 1, because we see that right there. A, L, uh, A, L aluminum is over here, so it will be positive 3. So we can just use this table to help us do the rest of them, like B, A is in the second column, so it will be positive 2, and B, R is in the halogen column, so it will be negative 1. But let's talk, talk about you know why, why is this the case? How come these elements follow this trend. Well, that all has to do with the elements wanting to be like a noble gas so they, they can have a full shell or a full octet. For example, let's take a look at phosphorus and look at how many how many valence electron it has. Valence electrons are just the electrons in, their, in the outermost shell. Phosphorus will have one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. And it wants to have a full shell, wants to have eight valence electron. It wants to, to fulfill what we call the, the octet rule. So it wants to be like a noble gas. The two nobles, the two noble gases that are closest to phosphorus are argon and neon. So if it were to become argon, it would just have to take one step, two step, and three steps forward. And then if it were to become like neon, it would have to go one, two, or one, two, three, four, and then five. So for ph phosphorus can either gain three electrons to be to have a to complete its current shell, or it can lose five electrons to get to its previous shell. And it rather gains three than lose five. So that's why phosphorus ends up taking a negative three charge. Because whenever you gain electrons, that's gonna form something that's negatively charged. And when you lose electrons, that's gonna form something that's positively charged. Let's take a look at another example to explain this. For Magnesium. Magnesium, we know it has two valence electrons. So to get to eight in this current shell, it would have to go one, two, three, four, five, six steps forward. Or to go back to the previous full shell, it would just have to go one step and two steps. So backwards. That magnesium would rather just lose, the t lose two electrons to become like neon instead of gaining six electrons, because losing two is easier than gaining six. So when the magnesium loses two electrons, then it's going to become a positive two charge because it's losing two electrons. So that's why you see that Mg forms a positive two charge. So you can just use the, you can either memorize this table or you can, you, you can just use the, the ideas that we just talked about to help you determine how many, what the, what the charge is. Like for potassium has one valence electron, so it can either gain seven to get to eight or lose one to get to the previous shell. And so it rather just loses one. So that's why potassium forms a positive one charge. And for the rest of these, you can just look at the table and you can determine the charge. So that's the first situation. The second situation is when you're given the number of protons and the number of electrons. Well, we know that protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. So in this first one, in A, we have 13 protons and 14 electrons. So that would be like positive 13 for the 13 protons, negative 14 for the number of electrons. So positive 13 plus negative 14, that's gonna equal negative one. That's one way you can do it, or you can also just use this equation. The charge is gonna equal the number of protons minus the number of electrons. So this will just be 13 minus 14. B, we have positive, we have 20 protons, 18 electrons. Since we have more protons this time, we expect it to be positively charged. And to determine the charge, well, that's just gonna equal the number of protons, 20 minus number of electrons, 18. So then that will be a positive two charge. C, 42 protons, 42 electrons. Well, they, you have the same number of protons and electrons. Then that just means that this is a neutral atom. 
it doesn't have a charge because if you were to plug it into the equation it'll be 42 minus 42 which equals zero and then lastly for d 55 protons 58 electrons we have more electrons than protons so more negatively charged than positively charged so overall it's going to be negative it'll be 55 minus 58 equals a negative three charge and then if we had to identify the the element um you can just match up the, the atomic number so like for a we have 13 protons that's going to tell us the, the atomic number is 13 so we look at 13 and that would just be aluminum and i know that the aluminum negative one charge that we got here doesn't match up with the charge it's supposed to be so this this was just a hypothetical example and that's how you can determine the charge of an ion if you're just given the element you can just use this table or use the octet rule to help you determine it and if you're given the protons and electrons you can just use the equation the charge is going to equal the number of protons minus the number of electrons if you want to learn how to ace chemistry if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them then you should head over to my website and get this free guide uh, 12 secrets to ace in chemistry you can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets i'm going to include a link in the description below check it out i think it's really going to help you and you're gonna you're gonna like it until next time keep working hard and continue the good work